Or two here, and I got something nifty to show you. It's one of a kind, first of its type, a rotating coil permanent magnet steady state. It's a steady state coil system. Okay. I mean by this, it's not fluctuating. There's no change in its fields. Um, and ideally, you really want the fields to fluctuate and change. But so let's show you this concept, and maybe it'll help you understand how a rotating coil works a little bit more. All right, so usually with a rotating coil, people wire the, mag the magnetic field, not the electric field. If you're running electricity through it, you want to run the electricity through the electric field. The electric field is bipolar in nature, while well, the magnetic field is uh, trinary in nature. Um, so we have three circuits, and each circuit is technically 120 degrees out of phase with each other. Um, and there's north pole energy, south pole energy, um, and then the diamagnetic energy, the null zone. In between it. So basically you have North Pole which is like hot, South Pole which is cold, diamond neck which is warm. Alright? Understand the metaphor. Um, and so with that, um, I have six neodymium magnets on top, if you can see them. Um, and they're laid out so each um, circuit of mild steel has just either North Pole or South Pole energy going into it. And so if you look at one of the circuits, the circuits form triangles because they're Star of Davids, which I'll explain in a second. And each triangle has three neodymium magnets touching it, so just either north or south pole energy is going into it and it's circulating. So you're creating a monopole circuit. And the copper is your diamagnetism, which is in between, um, which is basically anti gravity. Okay? And uh, for these magnets, fall over, I'm going to show you the magnetic field because these guys slip out easily. There we go. Sort of like this interesting star pattern. Um, even though you're really just seeing the neodymium magnets. I have some cylindrical, very small, long neodymium magnets that easily break. I'm going to try to find them to place them in between to make this a little bit nicer and prettier and um, have the whole thing work. The core is aluminum foil with aluminum foil tape wrapped around it. Uh, technically, the core in itself could work as the coil as long as the geometry is right. And a Star of David geometry is basically the whole is two units while each of the toroid um, diameter is uh, a unit. Or the whole thing, the whole diameter is four units then basically. It's like a, a one, one to two ratio. Um, well technically one to one, depends on what you're referencing. Um, but aluminum's not paramagnetic enough to work with these small fields. If you get stronger fields, aluminum would work great. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, you also don't need to necessarily use copper for your third circuit, and you don't need these magnets on it. You could have your uh, commuter or whatever on the outside um, setting magnetism into the coil, and so it will change. And basically, each one would cycle between north, south, diamagnetic. Um, and the copper um, is diamagnetic, but so can steel, so can all conductors. So this relates to 369, or 396 and 693, and there's an oscillation. And that oscillation refers can refer to um, moving back between these three forms of magnetism. North pole, diamagnetism south, south, diamagnetism north. So whenever um, the, there's an effect, and there's no name for this effect, and it's been really hard for me to find anything to quantify this effect. And one can, this is super important to understand, is in the... A conductor in a changing magnetic field will exhibit a diamagnetic response, a very strong diamagnetic response. So as it's moving from a north to a south, um, it, there's a diamagnetic response in it. It's very strong, um, much stronger than diamagnetism usually. For example, if you have a, a, a common example, alu they always use it with aluminum to exhibit this, which is interesting. So I'm wondering if this effect is greater on aluminum. Uh, if you take an aluminum plate, you stick it in a phone book, you put it over a AC electromagnet, so it's fluctuating back and forth, creates a changing magnetic field. The phone book with the aluminum plate will hover, will levitate above it. Simplest way to get diamagnetic levitation. Um, and so, with that, if you're having the fields change, being this all wound with steel or a magnetic substance essentially, um, it would go between a north diamagnetic south, and it would oscillate between those three magnetic um, modes.
And yeah, that's a really important concept, extremely, extremely important, um, that we really need to understand a little bit more. Um, so yeah, here's my coil. Um, I have some other ideas I'm working on at the moment, making myself a new te Tesla cone transformer to work with this guy. Um, and hopefully some cool things will manifest. But otherwise, just sending this idea out to the universe, i.e. YouTube, that maybe you guys can start building and modifying concepts off of this. And start staying the, uh, the road in map, uh, even though 2D map is a little off in terms of how we interpret it, but understand the patterns, because the patterns have diamagnetic patterns, magnetic patterns, electric patterns, and how these patterns relate to the actual fields we're living in and experiencing. Um, and yeah, very cool. So, it's a Friday night, I'm off to do some fire dancing, um, downtown Portland, Maine, if you guys are ever in the area, you can come watch. I have a group of fire dancers, um, even though it's getting winter, it's been dying down, we got 15 fire dancers, I've been running the event for four years. So if you're in the area, come watch, it's really cool, I know there's people down in Boston who contact me, not too far away, I should be in Boston soon, um, to work on some work with uh, a couple friends down there. But, uh, yeah, ciao, adios, and, uh, namaste. Enjoy your day. Bye.